Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming part two of my Will I Buy It series. I'm gonna have two videos go up this week on Will I Buy It. I just didn't want to make them obnoxiously long because sometimes it's hard to sit and watch people go on and on and on about new makeup launches. So I thought I'd split this video because I had so many new launches to talk about. So let's start back up. If you missed yesterday's video, I will link it up in the cards for you to check out as well. So there were a lot of new things launching for Valentine's Day and one of the brands I did see throw out some new stuff is Sydney Grace. Now I haven't tried Sydney Grace yet but they did do like a little collection of I believe eyeshadows for Valentine's Day. I can't remember if she did anything else. I will throw a picture up so you guys can see it but I haven't bought anything yet. I'm so tempted because I saw this beautiful swatch of one of the colors and I was super super tempted but I did restrain myself because I'm trying to buy less makeup and I hadn't filmed in a while and I've, I've just been buying so much you guys it's ridiculous so Sydney Grace is definitely one of those brands I plan on trying in 2018. I do want to film a Brands I Want to Try video that will be up eventually. The list is so long, it's crazy, and it's a lot of indie brands, so if you can imagine. Yeah. Another new product that came out is the LA Girl Pro Matte Foundation. Now, I have an LA Girl foundation and don't think I've ever used it. I also have their concealers. Not a super huge fan, but what they are known for is being very very affordable so this foundation for example is $8.99 and has 14 shades I actually thought the packaging of these looked like the MAC Pro Longwear concealer packaging so I thought it was a concealer but now I'm realizing it's a foundation I haven't tried it let me know if you guys have I, I'm not gonna be picking this up again because again I'm trying not to buy foundation because I don't need it I don't need it at all Okay, another really cool indie brand that I have been meaning to try is Love Lux Beauty. I actually bought one of their palettes after I had been stalking them on the internet and like I haven't heard anything yet so I'm like is it a small brand because I know sometimes it can just take so long so I'm going to wait it out for a little while and I haven't been very good at like checking my account to see if the money left and stuff so if you guys have shopped from them can you let me know because I'm curious but they came out with these really freaking cool pastel brights like lipsticks or they're called pastel mixers for lips and body art and I just thought that was a really cool concept because one of the pictures they had a promo picture of this lip look looks so cool now I'm not gonna wear lipstick like that but I also thought that is such a great idea that they're promoting it as a mixer because if you have a color that you want to lighten or you want to you know make it a little more edgy I thought it was really cool that they came out with something like that because I've never seen anything like that before and I wish I could like rub these all over my body because I just love all the colors they chose. Next new launch I want to talk about is from Pixie. I actually saw these in store. They were at my Target much much before these collabs were announced so I was like oh, I didn't realize that they came out with these collections but the first one I saw was the lip palette and the cheek palette by Dulce Candy. Dulce Candy was actually one of the first YouTubers I found and I used to love following her YouTube channel. I'm still subscribed to her but I don't watch her as often and she's kind of taken a different road, kind of like Ingrid. Um, she like focuses on books and just all whatever, you know, she's so big now and all that stuff but I was kind of surprised. like. I'm not really into lip palettes so I won't buy the lip palette but I was kind of surprised with the cheek palette because I feel like I heard her say that she was going to try and make something that would work with a lot of different skin tones but I'm looking at these colors and they just look very 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 basic nothing that like jumps out at me at all so I'm just gonna pass on this and honestly I don't think Pixie is that cheap. When it comes to their makeup, I know they have really good skincare and a lot of people really like their skincare. But when it comes to their makeup, I'm really, really not interested. They also did a eyeshadow palette with another creator. And then they also collab with Chloe Morello where she did like split pans and like a, she did like an eye and a blush palette and like a lipstick or something. So they each got like two products to work on, but I don't know, I'm like a little bit shocked that none of these are very different products, but maybe that's what Pixie needed for their product line, so I don't know what to tell you guys. 
but I won't be purchasing any of those. Okay, the next collab was Elf Cosmetics and Christian Siriano. Now I actually really think Christian Siriano is cool. I watched him when he was on Project Runway and I still follow him. I think his work is beautiful. This palette does look wonderful and I did buy the Elf Jewel Pop palette that they came out with not so long ago and the quality of those eyeshadows was wonderful but this is another colorful eyeshadow palette and I'm like I don't need both like yeah, I'd like to support somebody out that I really do enjoy, but honestly, is anyone going to lose sleep if I don't buy a $12 eyeshadow palette? Probably not, and so I'm just going to pass because I have way too many eyeshadow palettes like this, and I'll probably never use it, so I think it's really cool, though, and I think if you like e.l.f. and you want to try out some of their products, you should definitely look at maybe trying this out from Christian Siriano. I also put... The Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Palette. So I was convinced I was going to buy this for a little while. And then I was like, Karen, let's really think this through. Because Jeffrey didn't swatch the palette in his reveal video, which I thought was really, really strange. And I had the first Jeffree Star Palette and I actually decluttered it. I sold it because I wasn't using it and I was not in love with this formula. So then I passed on the Androgyny palette. I do have two friends that are absolutely obsessed with the Androgyny palette. But personally for me, they were just not my makeup vibes. And then Blood Sugar came along and I was really, really excited because you name something Blood Sugar and you expect a lot of reds. But once I saw the reveal and once I really looked at the palette, I was like, you know what? This is really just one of those palettes that's going to sit in my collection. I don't feel like there's enough red shades. I thought there were way too many like light cream colors. And to top it all off, the palette sold out in like... They're saying three minutes. I swear the palette sold out in three seconds because I was on the website when the palette launched and I don't even think I got to add it to cart. I think it sold out right away. So I'm not losing any sleep over it. They are having a pre-order for it so that when it restocks you can get it on the pre-order but I'm not I'm done I'm I'm not gonna wait for this palette and then try and buy it and act like anyone cares about it three months from now so the next product I see on here that I had saved to, to talk about is the Laura Mercier concealers it doesn't really say when these are launching but I'm curious because there was a new foundation that she released and that was really good I just had a hard time finding my shade it was very, very full coverage. So these concealers look like they match that foundation packaging. So I'm really, really curious to see if it's going to be a similar, like more full coverage, like concealer formula. I'm on a real concealer like hunt right now. So any type of concealer is really piquing my interest. Now I did forget to talk about Anastasia's liquid lipsticks that they're coming out with. Looks like they're coming out with some really cool shades. There's some blues, a really beautiful berry color called Bohemian, and some of these browns look gorgeous. But you guys, I I haven't tried their new AABH liquid lipstick formula, but the old formula was so drying and horrible that I really don't want to try the new formula, even though I've heard it's a lot better. So let me know what you guys think. For now, I'm passing on it. The Bomb is coming out with three bronzers. I heard a lot of buzz about this. A lot of people are really excited about these bronzers. They are $17.50 each, which I think is a great price point. And I feel like you're going to get a decent amount of product. The packaging is really cute. I actually really like one of the Bombs highlighters. I use it as like a bronzer highlighter. I think it's the Betty Luminizer. I can't remember because I can't remember the name of it, but it has a lot of shimmer in it, so I love to use it as like a glow. But these are definitely just like regular bronzers. They look like matte bronzers. So I think if you're on the market for a bronzer and you like the Bomb, then you definitely want to check it out. For now, I'm definitely passing on it. The Beauty Blender is coming out with a blusher Beauty Blender, so I believe this one looks a little bit smaller and it looks like it's going to work really well with your liquid products like blush or highlight or even bronzer. Personally, I don't buy Beauty Blenders anymore or I try not to unless they're an amazing deal because I found a lot of really wonderful drugstore sponges that work just as well for me. I do like the color of this, it's like a coral color, but other than that, I have no interest in picking this 
up. Now, Melt Cosmetics is coming out with Melt Unconventional Nudes or Nudes. And they have four different shades. They're very beautiful. They're more of that like orangey tone nude, which is really freaking hard to find. A lot of nudes are more rosy or mauve shades. So I think it's cool they did something different. I'm not going to buy any of these because I don't really like buying from Melt. I think their products are so freaking pricey. So I'm going to hard pass on that. But let me know if you guys picked up any of these products. Okay, guys, here is the palette I'm so excited about. And... Angelica, I talk about her all the time. <laughs> I talk to her, I talk about her like we're like besties, like, but really I'm just basically like a super fan. But she talked about this palette in her, like going on the wish list or not, and it was an indie brand from the UK that I'd never heard of. Misha Lu Cosmetics. So never heard of this brand. She mentioned their witchcraft palette, and I was like, hmm. And then she, like, she put up a picture of it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I want that palette. And I like salivated and I salivated. And it's from the UK, so of course the conversion is pretty spendy palette. And I was like, no, I can't afford it because it was going to be like 60 bucks to have it sent here. And then they had a sale for Valentine's Day, so I was on it. Like, I was on that shit. So I bought it. I'm excited. I don't know when it's going to get here. I've been really bad at tracking all my packages. So we'll see but these shades are just so freaking inspiring and i just cannot wait to play with this palette i'm so excited so so excited stila cosmetics did preview some new shimmer and glow liquid eyeshadows that are coming out i don't know when it doesn't really say but you guys i have two of the stila shimmer and glows and i love them i honestly feel like they are like eyeshadows for like, you know how those books are called, like, PowerPoint for dummies? These are, like, eyeshadows for dummies because they're so easy. They glide on. You don't even need any other eye makeup. Just use that on your lid and you're good to go. There's so many cool colors. I have two of them, so I really like them. And the newer shades they're coming out with, there's a beautiful, like, electric blue. There's a beautiful green, purple, like, some really, really fun shades. So I'm super duper excited to get all over that. Now the next new launch is the Urban Decay Backtalk Palette. They say it's two palettes in one and it looks like it has eight eyeshadows and flow four blushes slash highlighters for $46. Now initially I feel like this is a cool palette. I like four shadows on the end more than I like the four shadows at the beginning. And I think it's a cool concept, but I don't think this palette is for everyone. I don't feel like if you have my skin tone, you're going to get a lot of use out of this because you can only use like really half of the palette. Like I'm so sick of all these uh, pinky shimmer colors. Like I love, I don't know. I just, I just know I don't love this palette. I think it's great if you love these tones, but uh, yeah, I just wish they had put in more mobs. And less of the same like light pinks. I just I just feel like that's a little bit behind the times as far as like current makeup trends. I wish they had done like a matte and a shimmer from those last four shades. So if they've done like a shimmer berry and a matte berry, shimmer bronze and a, a matte bronze, and then like a shimmer dark chocolate and a matte dark chocolate. I think that would have been a little more fun for me because you can easily blend the matte shade and then use the shimmer all over your lid. Gives you kind of a monochromatic look, but just so cool. Like, I just don't know how many different variations of a look you can create with these colors. And the brow bone highlight, like most people don't really want like a pink brow bone highlight. So I don't know. I just feel like do better, you know, Urban <laughs> Decay. Just do better, please. <laughs> Okay, you guys, Makeup Geek has been talking about her big comeback. It looks like she's working on new shadows. I've seen a lot of people kind of wonder where is Makeup Geek? Like, there's so many new palettes coming out, and nobody's heard about anything new coming out from Makeup Geek. So, it sounds like Marlena had a rough 2017. I'm not a gossip channel, but last time I checked, she got married in like 2016. So I recently watched Marlena's update video of like what's been going on with her life. And so it sounds like she got a divorce potentially and also like a restraining order against Coco Bear who has an eyeshadow named after him. So that was really interesting. It always like puzzles me how 
people wait forever to get married and then as soon as they get married it like doesn't work out it's kind of sad so I really hope she's okay it sounds like she's had a lot of like life stuff happen and health stuff so I think 2018 is gonna be a comeback for Makeup Geek and I think we're all excited and ready for it now I did see these palettes Koki Cosmetics is coming out with these gorgeous new palettes, there's one called Utopia, there's one called Peachy Queen, and there's one called Treasured. And they are all so, so cool. I have never bought anything from Koki Cosmetics. I think they're known for nail polish, I think. But I've seen this. I've seen these nail polishes at like Walmart, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but these palettes look really, really cool. They're supposed to be $13 and supposed to be coming to Rite Aid stores in April. Now, I don't live by Rite Aid. I don't even think the state of North Dakota has a Rite Aid, so uh, if you guys uh, can hook me up with one of these palettes, I'll, I'll uh, owe you one. <laughs> we can do a palette exchange or something. Uh, now, this is the other BH Cosmetics palette that came out or is coming out. Glam Reflection Series by BH Cosmetics. The particular palette is called Gilded. Again, just looks like everything else I have, so I'm going to pass on it. But I do like BH Cosmetics. I featured them in a video of brands I think you should try in 2018. I will try and remember to link it up in the cards, but BH Cosmetics is really good, you guys, and so, so affordable, so if you get a chance, definitely try them out. Okay, so I did get an email this morning and saw that Too Faced launched its Life's, Life is a Festival collection. I don't know if I talked about this in any previous videos, but I'm just going to pass on the whole damn thing. I just can't with Too Faced. I, I pass. I'm hard passing. Okay, you guys, now here's something I am so so excited about. I know this is like a lot for this brand. I feel like they're really doing too much, but I can't help it. When it comes to Juvia's Place, I'm here for it. They haven't screwed me over yet with the palette, so I am here for it, honey. And they're coming out with two palettes, the Warrior and the Warrior 2. Are you kidding me? Look at this packaging. I'm so here for it. I hope the Warrior is all reds and oh my god, I just cannot wait. I love when they come out with new palettes. It's a little bit terrifying because I really am not getting a whole lot of use out of every Juvia's Place palette that I keep buying, but I just love them. I love how interesting they are. It's like ColourPop. I don't feel too terrible because it's more affordable. It's like for the moment, you don't wear a t-shirt till you drop dead, so it's like, I don't know, I think of eyeshadow palettes as like my accessories. So I like buy one, I use it, if I get over it, I'll like either sell it or keep it or you know, use it at a later time. So I don't know, that's kind of how I justify buying so many different palettes. Now this I'm really freaking excited about. Storybook Cosmetics is coming to Ulta. I'm so excited because I really, really want to try the Mean Girls palette and I really want to try Storybook Cosmetics in general but I've been hesitant to buy from them because they're pretty pricey. I like the ability to be able to return a palette if I don't like it, so I'm really excited that a lot of these indie brands are coming into Sephora and Ulta. Makes my life a lot easier, so let me know if you guys are excited. And MAC Cosmetics is coming out with a matte Fix Plus, which is really, really cool. I really love Fix Plus. It is definitely like one of my holy grail makeup sprays. It's not supposed to be a setting spray, but I'm telling you guys, it sets my makeup like, it's unbelievable. It really just takes away any harsh lines, smoothens my face. I feel airbrushed when I wear Fix Plus, so I think it'll be fun for oily girls to have the option to have a matte Fix Plus so they don't look as shiny and dewy. I think I might get my hands on it too. I'm really curious to see, especially for the summertime. You can even just spray it on your skin if you're not wearing makeup. So 100% excited for that launch. Cannot wait to see what happens. Okay with guys, and then the last thing I wanna talk about in this Will I Bite video is Pat McGrath's launch of the smaller eyeshadow palettes with six shades. She's coming out with Platinum Bronze, Bronze Ambition, and Lovey and Rose. So I was looking at these and I'm like, oh, I for sure want the colorful one with the purple and the pink. And the other two kind of look the same. One looks like it's a warm tone, one looks like it's a cool tone. So I'm like, oh, and now I've decided I kind of want all of them. Um, these are set to launch on like March 
7th on Pat McGrath's website. Now, I'm a little worried about Auntie Pat too because I feel like she's coming out with something new all the time as well, which freaks me out because her products are very expensive and uh, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Like I own her three palettes, the Mothership, the Mothership 2, the Mothership 3, then I bought the Mothership 4 and I was kind of annoyed because Mothership 4 came out on her website one day and the very next day Sephora carried it and uh, I've been screwed by Pat McGrath's shipping previously where I bought the palette on Pat McGrath's website like two weeks prior to its launch on Sephora and everyone that got their palettes from Sephora pretty much got their palettes before I even got mine that had like released on Pat McGrath's like weeks prior. So that was annoying. And then with this Mothership 4, I was like, okay, let me just buy it on Pat McGrath because I feel like I for sure want it and I won't want to return it. And I don't know when it's coming out on Sephora. So then the very next day it was on Sephora.com. And again, I literally ordered it on Sephora.com. I, I think Sephora.com got too far ago sooner than Pat McGrath again. So I'm like, it's pointless buying on her website because I don't know when I'm gonna get my product and Sephora I have flash shipping so why would I why would I shop on her website plus I can return to Sephora if I wanted to so I'm thinking I'm gonna try and hold out this time for sure I'm just gonna wait until the palettes launch on Sephora.com hopefully it'll just be the very next day because the pattern I read was that if it wasn't coming out with Sephora the very next day she would announce it but if it's going to be close, they're not going to announce it and I feel like they haven't announced it yet. So yeah, I'm just going to wait and see if it comes on Sephora. For sure I'm going to get the colorful one. The other two I don't really need. So hopefully I'll stay strong and not buy all three, but I can't make any promises, you guys. Okay guys, that is everything I wanted to talk about in my Will I Bite videos this week. I hope you guys enjoyed two videos instead of one, but I thought it would be nice to keep them short and sweet. That way, you know, you guys don't have to sit here and watch like a two hour long video. So I hope you liked it. Let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to tag me in any new launches that you want me to feature in my Will I Buy It videos. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys. Bye.